we're going to join Nathaniel as he takes us through his process of compositing commercial photography and also covers the technical skills of compositing for Photoshop. What I'm looking for is natural ebbs and flows, contours in the environment that may mesh well together. So a couple of the challenges here with this photo, uh, we do have this kind of top of this berm, which we could maybe line up with right where this hill comes through, right? You can kind of see how that would sort of line up. And if we change the color and blend it together, maybe we can make that look like it just sort of flows and runs off a cliff. Interesting thought. Uh, here in the foreground, a little more tricky because we have the middle ground grass, which is very small, it's a very fine texture. And then over in the photo on the right, it's big grass, it's a chunky, sharp texture. Um, that's gonna be more challenging, um, but we're overlapping these images. So we could save the top part here and erase all the way until we get to like this mm. grass over here and just take out all this bigger chunky stuff and just have the image on the left come through instead. I'm not sure if we're gonna go with that photo. I'm just walking through what I'm thinking of when I see this. All right, and then we have this image, which now I kind of, kind of like this one a lot. Um, because a little challenging with this tree sticking up above the horizon because we have a sudden cutoff. Um, let's play with this one. Let's play with this image here. I'm going to call this right uh, because it's the image here to the right. We're going to add a layer mask and we're going to begin just painting and playing. So grab the paintbrush tool and I'm going to right click. I'll probably make it a little bit bigger. I like to begin with like large soft edge brush and just generally get an idea of how would this work together? Can it work together? And then we'll go in and, and really begin the fine tuning process. So this is where it helps if you have some type of graphics tablet as well. If I reduce the opacity of this layer, you can see we have a generous amount of overlap. You kind of want that because there are areas of both images in the overlap that you want to preserve to make this thing look realistic. So let's just crank the opacity back up. And the first thing I want to do is select the layer mask there grab my brush tool again. Let's paint away the section on our right image and try to reveal the rock. Mm -hmm. uh, let me drop down my brush. I want to shut off shape dynamics here. I want no shape dynamics and I want it to be a soft edge brush, not hard. So let's go super soft like so. All right, so we're going to paint this away. We're going to bring this rock into play first. Now you can see we're cutting off branches of this tree. It doesn't look very realistic. The advantage to using overgrowth and beautiful landscapes is everything's organic and free flowing. So uh, you can be you can be very fast and loose with what you're doing. Um, and it doesn't have to nothing has to be incredibly precise. There are areas that are going to have to be precise. But in general, roughing something in like this can be pretty easy. Um, and I'm just using the letter X to swap my foreground and background color. You'll see we have the image on the right, we've added a layer mask to it. Mm -hmm. When we paint black in that layer mask, we're hiding parts of that image. If we hide too much of the image, we're going to paint with white to bring that back. And uh, all will be right with the world. All right, let's keep painting uh, like so. And I'm just looking for how can we make this meld together well? And we're going to paint with white. I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. Your square bracket key is the little bracket just to the right of the letter P on your keyboard. That's how you're going to make your brush larger or smaller. Makes it really fast moving in and making these kind of changes. Now, I don't know if you can see, there's a little town or something there. I kind of yeah. want to keep that in the image. That, that kind of little stuff, it just adds depth to the image. So I want to try to preserve that. That's here in the image on the right. So I'm just keeping an eye on that. Uh, let me paint away more of this foreground and see what that looks like. Uh, it's not too bad, but I, I, I want to bring back some of the rocks and trees and we'll figure out how to more exactly bring this together. And you can see that the tree, uh, the tree transition here is not the greatest. You see how powerful that is? Just too much. It's too much. It's too big. We're trying to blend these images. So this is where we're going to go and adjust the opacity, not the flow, but the opacity of the brush. It's going to give us incredible control. I'm going 30% opacity, and it's just going to allow me to paint multiple strokes and just bring the tree back without really bringing the tree back. Yeah. Um, and it's going to just really begin to build things and layer this in for us. And this would be the time here when we get to these type of edges where we don't want any of this fading, right? You can still see how there's fading in and out of our trees. We don't want that. So here's where you go with a much harder edged brush, you know, 80%, something like that, but also a much smaller brush. So we'll knock this down probably to about six pixels would be my guess. It's all going to depend on your uh, image. And we're just trying to bring back like, like, give me those branches, give me some of the leaves coming off the branches. And you're going to see when we zoom back out after doing this, it's going to give this a much more organic feel 
while we can still see enough of that grass behind it that it looks very believable and realistic. If you have something where it's very bright grass that shows up, just paint that away. This is the advantage to using your layer mask here. Great, and over here, see how that leaf is just kind of faded? We don't want that. We don't want our trees to have faded leaves. We want them to have a nice, crisp cut edge. And that's what this is allowing us to do when we use, a, a, when we use excuse me, if I can get my words out, <laughs> when we use a harder edged brush. Up here is a little more tender. So we're gonna size our brush down. I'm gonna go to like two or three. And I'm just gonna try to paint over sort of some of the leafy areas because we really want to save all of these cool mm -hmm. uh, backlit hills in, the, in the, uh, the background area of the image. So, well, I guess it's technically middle ground. Um, but I'm just sort of painting anywhere I like. Who cares? Nobody knows what a tree looks like. We, we can identify treeness, but we can't identify a tree. So as long as there's treeness, people are gonna know it's a tree. Uh, and here we go, just painting in, just random strokes here and there and everywhere. And it's going to have enough treeness that uh, it looks like a tree that hasn't been just harshly cut between our two images. Yeah. And like this, we begin just blending and blending and blending and moving our images together. Thanks guys.